Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, we're going to try to find the force on the middle charge Q2 due to the presence of Q1 and Q3, the two outside charges. Again, the best place to start is by drawing the vectors representing the forces between each of the two interactions. So first we'll see how Q1 affects Q2. Since they're oppositely charged, Q1 will pull on Q2, and of course Q2 will pull on Q1, but again, we only want to look at the force acting on Q2 due to the presence of Q1, which will be a force in the direction to the left. And so we can say that this would be the force between 1 and 2, and it's in the direction, in the negative x direction. Now, the force between Q2 and Q3, well, that'll be a stronger force because the, for, the charge Q3 is larger than Q1 and they're equal distance away from one another. And also it'll be to the right because the force on Q2 due to the presence of Q3, it'll be pulling, Q3 will be pulling on Q2 to the right. And so we see a force in this direction. So this would be F between two and three, like that. Now when we add the two together, we have to add them vectorially. Notice that F23 will be larger in magnitude than F12, and so we can then say that the net force will be to the right, like this, and we can say that F, the net force, or the total force, will simply be the vector sum of F12 plus F23. Now here again, you may say, well, isn't F12 negative because it's pointing to the left? The answer is yes. It is negative, but we write it as the vector f, and then later on when we put the components in there, we'll take care of the negative sign, indicating that the force actually does indeed pull to the left. Now let's go ahead and find the magnitude of those two forces, F12 and F23. So F12, as we can see up here, is simply k times q1, q2 divided by the distance between them squared. So in this case, that would be k. q1, which is q and q2 which is equal to 2q even though it says negative 2q we put in a positive 2q because we're only looking for the magnitude of the force divided by the distance between them that would be d squared so when we simplify that that would be 2k q squared divided by d squared we do the same for f between the force between 2 and 3 and that would be equal to k times q2 in this case, so we'll just go ahead and write the formula down, times q3 divided by the distance between them squared. And so in this case, that would be k times q2 is 2q. Again, we don't write the negative sign because we just want to find the magnitude, times q3, which is 3q, all divided by the distance between them squared, which is d squared, which ends up being 6k q squared divided by d squared. Now we're ready to find the final or the total force on Q2 in vector format. So F is equal to the magnitude of F12, which we found over here. And it'll be negative direction, so we'll put a negative sign in front of that. So negative, the magnitude, 2Q, Q squared divided by D squared in the X direction. Plus, because the direction of F23 will be to the right, the magnitude, 6KQ squared divided by d squared in the positive x direction and now we can vectorially add those two together and we get the final force or the total force is equal to a positive 4k q squared divided by d squared in the x direction and so that's how we do that to try to find the force for q2 or the force acting on q2 due to the presence of q1 and q3